Everybody's going to see who's going to do it, right? Come on. You're down in Mexico. What kind of sound do they make go down in Mexico for that? It's cool. Wow, wow. Wow, wow. wow. Wow, wow. <laughs> so what's the theme of today's show <laughs> on the charts? I have no idea, but we're live, and welcome back to Corona Geek, where we talk all about mobile app development using Corona SDK. I'm your host, Charles McKeever, and today we're making international dog sounds. <laughs> <laughs> barking plugin for Corona SDK is that it, it can bark in different languages. Oh, there you go. That'd be cool. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be, uh, what do you call that? Uh, I can communicate with dogs around the world. Exactly, exactly. Wouldn't even have to, you wouldn't even have to worry about it. Be all well, right, not really communicate, more like piss off all dogs around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can get bitten in more than one country. Well, yeah. well joining us today is, uh, we've got Ed Marina here from RomanGamer.com. We got we have Sergey Lurg from uh, SpiralCodeStudio.com, and we've got Steven Johnson with us from MijualBossStudios.com. So we've got a lot of stuff to talk about today. We, we've, been, we've been doing a series of videos on a game uh, that's a popular game that's already been created. It kind of, um, uh, it's called They Need to Be Fed 3. Uh, and if you haven't watched these videos, you need to go over to youtube.com slash Corona Geek and, uh, and watch the videos there. Um, they're all labeled part one, part two, part three, uh, and so on. And last time we added turrets to the mix and we also had heat-seeking bullets. What I'm calling heat-seeking bullets. I don't know. What, what do you call them, Ed? They're just... Uh, they're just uh, guided missiles. Guided sort. missiles, heat-seeking. Yeah, yeah, is, they... is it guided missiles or homing missiles? Homing. Oh, yeah, homing. yeah, homing missiles, yeah, yeah. So they, they chase the player around the platform, which in this case is a circle, and uh, and it's actually pretty comical to watch when you're running away from these things. When you it's get like a caught cartoon. with you chasing you, you get kind of in trouble. You're like, I can't decide where to go. Yeah. Well, the last time we talked about the vector math, uh, involved and looked at some of the code and stuff, but I, I think we, we want to slow down a little bit, maybe back up just a few steps to just make sure that everybody understands all the different moving parts so that we don't just sort of wave our hands and say, oh yeah, vector math is involved and kind of move on and leave anybody behind. So we're going to slow down a little bit this time and, and cover some of the details. Before we get to that, though, I do have a topic that I, I kind of want to raise, um, and that is uh, ad blockers. I don't know if you guys have. Well, I've been following that a little bit. Yeah. Have you? Have you? So iOS nine ha a allows now for you to install an ad blocker, and uh, I don't know what's that. In Safari. Yeah, in Safari. Right. So yeah. So what you do is you uh, you add your you go out and purchase your ad blocker, and then that ad blocker has instructions for enabling, um, enabling that feature, on your device, and then when you open up Safari. Um, and go to any site, uh, the ads are just blocked. And so I, I, I saw this um, being talked about, but didn't really pay much attention to it, which I, I think is maybe the case for, some, for most people. And, um, but then I saw this article come across the wire that, that piqued my curiosity. And um, so I got to reading, reading up on it, and I went to the store, and I saw that there were a, a couple of plugins that were really the top plugins. Um, and one of them was called Peace by Marco Arment, who is a pretty sort of, you know, pretty, I guess, internet famous, if you will. And then uh, the other one was Crystal. And I got to looking at the, who the developer uh, of Crystal was, and I realized it was Dean Murphy. You guys remember Dean Murphy, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Corona, Corona developer, been on the show before, been on the panel before. Um, you know, lots of, lots of great tips and advice from him and stuff. Well... Uh, he's doing iOS development at you know now, and he uh, created Crystal. And oh, striking when the hammer's hot. What's that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I thought I was really surprised, and I'm very proud of him for you know like you know, like jumping on this thing. Well, anyway, he's going to be on the show next week to talk about ad blockers, and you know kind of like the journey that he's been on, and uh, and and to add sort of a, a curiosity piece to the mix. Uh, or just a sort of uh, an element of drama, I guess you could say, is that Marco Arment, the, the developer of Peace, which was which was the number one um, 
ad blocker up until a couple of days ago, he actually pulled the ad blocker from the store, and which leaves Dean as the number one <laughs> ad blocker in the store. So <laughs> never heard yeah, yeah. So, so you know, congratulations to Dean, and we're very proud of him. And uh, he's going to come on and talk to us about the whole thing. So that, that that'll be next week. Uh, he'll be our, our our guest for next week. So I'm really excited about that. But I I just wanted to put this out to the panel. Are you are you guys interested in ad blockers for your device? Do you have any kind of? You know my answer, buddy. Ed, Ed you don't have a device. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> my, it's my device. <laughs> I can shut well, off the ads any time. I suppose Android uh, already suffered some hard blocking, but I never cared to install it. Yeah. Well, I'm sure, yeah, and and uh, I'm sure that you could probably get an Android blocker, but this, at least according to the articles out there, um, this seems to be sort of, a, I don't know, kind of fly in the face of, of Apple flying in the face of Google. Right, because so, we we all know that Google gets their ad revenue from um, from ads, or they get their ad revenue from ads. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, they get all the majority of their revenue from ads, and uh, for Apple to sort of say, "Hey, we're we're going to allow people to block ads on their their on Safari," really kind of should should get up their nose quite a bit. I don't know. Yes. Anyway, that's what um, I was reading in the article. Is that uh, it's kind of like striking at Google. Yeah, uh, and you know you have to you have to kind of break it down, I guess. And we'll talk more about this next week. But you know, Apple is a portion of the market, and then there's Android, and of course, and Android. I mean, Google. Let's just say Google is not going to implement an ad blocker, right? They're not going to really encourage people to put in ad blockers. At least I don't think. And um, and so that really means that half half of the market will still be seeing ads. So and on iOS, only the percentage of people who actually go to the trouble of installing an ad blocker will will be blocking ads. But I think it's gonna. I don't know. I, from what I've seen, uh, Dean's listing had 450 positive reviews. You know, like uh, four and a half, five stars. So you, we all know that that's just a portion. People who leave reviews are only a small portion of the people who actually purchase an ad blocker, right? So I can imagine that this is a lot more popular than we think. Golden goose. Yeah, I think this is a lot more popular than we think, and and desktop blockers are becoming you know very popular. I mean, at least the the, the conversation around them are becoming very popular. I I, I hear a lot of I've hear I've heard a lot what more. What can I tell you about ad block on on my browser? Is is uh, the life result? It is just refine because you make one uh, wrong click and you uh, go to the hell of ad banners page so it's disaster yeah well I, I know that just in general from a user experience standpoint that um, websites load faster you know we and do. one of the uh, and one of the uh, one of the stated benefits for mobile is that one, it, the the uh, the pages load faster. Two, they don't take up as much bandwidth off of your data plan. And three, uh, you're not engaging the radio as much to try to download content, so you're actually getting more battery life out of your ba your battery or more charge time out of your battery uh, because you're not having to spend it all you know engaging the radio to make all these extra calls. So anyway, it's some it's some interesting stuff. Uh, stuff. Um, here, I was going to put a li put a link in here. So if you go to iOS and uh, search for ad blockers, you'll probably come up you know anyway. But um, Crystal is the name of it. So we'll put a link in the show notes to it, and I put a link in the chat here to uh, a post that he did back in was that uh, sept uh, August in August August twenty second. He did some benchmarks for Crystal. And showed some of the load times and and things like that. So some, just some interesting numbers there for for sure. I just wanted to add to your announcement here is that uh, this is probably the only time I've ever seen this where two members of the Corona community now have their apps in a top ten slot somewhere on one of the three columns of the app Annie. So oh, Pop nice. the Lock is still uh, 
toggling between first and second. And Crystal, of course, as you were just saying, is number one now in paid. <laughs>